Good morning. This video is going to be about people pleasing, trying to be helpful and trying to be productive as a way of feeling worthy or to be liked. Trying to be pretty, trying to be productive, trying to be helpful. And this video is inspired by a video I just watched from Gabor Mate, just a five minute video, which I will link in the description. I've made a lot of videos about people pleasers and this kind of goes out. This is also for myself, but also for a lot of men who get friend zoned because I think about them specifically. And the reason that, um, let me talk about the friend zoning first. Men often wonder, well, I'm such a nice guy, why is she with this guy and not with me, you know? And they think if I just do enough nice things, if I'm just around, if I just do, if I'm just helpful enough and kind enough and completely ignore my own needs in service of you, you will like me. But the problem with that is that there is a lack of authenticity and that's what people who get friend zone don't realize they get so invested in performing actually that and they're not in touch with their own needs that it's not it's not genuine and that's why it's unattractive but where does that come from because it's not your fault it originates in childhood when See, because children have two needs. They have the need for authenticity, but a much stronger need is the need for attachment. We have to attach to our caretakers because we are helpless as children. And the problem with most parents is that they don't have the emotional bandwidth or stability to validate a child's natural feelings and personality. The parents may be busy or they may be emotionally disconnected from themselves so they can't handle a child's feelings or they may even be cold or worse, they could be abusive, alcoholics, have mental health issues but even they could just be struggling in their own lives. And so they can't hold space for the child's many emotions and needs. And so children are very smart. We learn that certain feelings, emotions, and needs are going to threaten our attachment. So we naturally suppress those. Naturally suppress those from the time that we're little. We might suppress our our desire to show affection, our feelings of joy. Well, mom and dad look sad, so I better not be happy, or I can't go to my parents with a problem because they'll just yell at me or they won't care. I have to figure it out on my own. I can't go to anyone for comfort. I know my parents love me, but they have so much going on. I won't burden them with my stuff. So people start to repress parts of themselves you know daddy wants me to you know be aggressive on the soccer field but I rather play with the girls so um part of me that part of me is shameful and unloved like there's so many things that can happen even in the best of homes and then people get to a point where they the, those parts of their personality, those parts of our brains are just, they kind of atrophy, you know, they atrophy, they're not enlivened. But you can re-enliven them, they're not gone. But then people go around as adults, we go around with that same mindset. Or kids figure out, okay, mom and dad don't notice me at all. Or maybe they grew up in foster care or in a boarding school and they figure out to be loved, I need to be the smart kid. 
I need to be the successful kid. I need to be the pretty kid because they're all very busy, but if I'm a pretty girl, I get attention. They're all very busy, but if I'm very helpful, I get noticed. If I'm very good, they pay attention to me. I'm not going to let them know when I'm upset, but if I'm very good, if I'm the perfect child, if I get good grades, if I do really well in sports, I get affection. So, so children will behave in certain ways, because children are very smart, to get attention, to get affection in a way, but they have to neglect other parts of themselves. So they start to disconnect from those other parts, the part that has needs. You know, children are very needy. A lot of children have to suppress their needs. I should probably start over on this video and start with that, but I'm just going to keep going. And I know that I suppress my needs. I suppress some of my needs. Um, my parents were loving parents. I felt loved, but they were busy. They didn't have a lot of time for me. Okay, that's what I mean. Even if parents love you, this can happen. I had to suppress a lot of my needs. I didn't even know I was doing it, you guys. I didn't even know I was suppressing my needs. And a lot of it has become more apparent to me because two months ago I started working with a therapist. I'm so glad I did because there was always a part of me that was like, I want to explore something about myself, like some things don't line up. But, uh, but I'm not a people pleaser, but I still had the consequences of suppressing my needs, but in a different way. But let me just talk about the people pleasers first before I go into the other ways that it can show up. So the people who grew up as people pleasers, I think were really grew up in, in neglectful homes. Okay. Where they, they didn't really feel loved, but they were noticed when they were helpful, pretty, productive, smart, got good grades. They had to perform. And so they learned that I am noticed when I do things for you. So they're completely out of touch with what they want. So they don't make requests. It's kind of like a bartering. And it's, it's inauthentic. Um, as children, it was very smart. It's very smart, actually, because it was able to help a child maintain their attachment system. But what works for children doesn't work for adults, you guys. What worked in childhood as a coping mechanism doesn't help us as adults, usually. Because if we're fawning or being helpful for attention, that's not how pe ad other adults connect with us. And it's inauthentic. It's like um, it's a child coping mechanism. It's not a healthy adult way of being. And that's why men will get friend zoned. Or that's why people can be in unhappy relationships with someone who is walled off or even someone who's aggressive or hostile because they're not in touch with their own needs. They're just reacting or they're not in touch with their own needs. So they're walled off because as children, they were punished for having needs. So they are expressing themselves. So they lost the ability to express themselves. They lost the ability to even know what they feel, or maybe they were never even taught what feelings were. But I think they were usually punished, you know, for being angry. I was in a relationship with someone who had great difficulty showing anger or saying when he was angry. And so whenever he would be angry with me, and you naturally get angry with people, with your friends or with people you're in a relationship with, you got to talk about it. But when you suppress it, it really, it brings a lot of, um, bad energy into the relationship and I was never able to figure out how he felt or what he was mad about and it was very frustrating for me like I think you're mad but what are you mad about tell me and and he couldn't but I 
I'm going to segue into like myself now. I noticed last week I was in three situations that mirror to me where I withhold, where I withhold exuberance or joy at seeing someone. Like there's a part of me that's just like not fully awakened that I see in other people. And the example I'm going to give you, there were three things that happened last week. But the one I'm going to give you was I was in, in a class. I was taking a dance class. I was there for the first time and we had to partner up. And I didn't know anyone. And I caught myself not initiating a partnership request with any of the ladies. It was just a women's class. And I noticed that I didn't have that hey, do you want to be my partner? I, it couldn't come out of me. I was very aware and I felt stifled in my voice. I felt stifled in my voice. The same way that men feel stifled asking women out, right? You feel that? I felt it. And then from the very back corner, this vivacious young woman, beautiful young woman, vivacious, with this long hair and she just looked at me. She's like, you, you, you. And she was all excited about partnering with me. Um, this is what really stayed with me. The way that she just looked at me and goes, you, 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 you. Like she wanted to be my partner. I hadn't even noticed her before. She didn't know me. And then she told me, as we were, you know, we had to do like a discussion about what we got for Christmas or something. And she told me something she got. And she told me she really liked my energy. Now, I was very flattered because I'm 61 and she was probably in her 20s. And when someone tells me they like my energy, that's the biggest compliment I can get. But also because she's young and had like very vivacious energy that she liked my energy was like very moving to me. And, um, but I, I was also struck by her, what I didn't have, where I felt stifled. She was so open. She was so open. She had no problem just saying you, 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 and showing her exuberance and her excitement to want to partner with me for this, um, exercise we were doing and not only did she have that voice that made me more interested in her I've talked before about when a man show, shows interest in me I it this is not a gay thing I'm not gay I'm not sexually interested in her but she, I'm, I'm giving you an example of human connection here, okay? Although she was really cute. <laughs> it's like, she was kind of hot. But I've talked before about when a man shows interest in me, I'm automatically more interested in him. So I noticed that the same thing was with her. And the other two examples that I have are also the same, where a woman was showing a lot of interest in a man, a man that was already like a man that was already on a date with her and she showed a lot of interest in him and affection for him and it made him like her a lot more so what i'm trying to say here is this exuberance and this joy or this interest that we feel in other people when we when it's fully expressed like oh my god i can't you know, I'm so happy you're here. I just, so, I'm so happy to be with you. I really want to be with you. Like this exuberance, this joy, this interest in other people. Genuine, that's genuine or that feels genuine. It makes the other person more interested in us. There's just something about it. But the problem is a lot of people have that turned off. Because showing interest and showing exuberance and wanting attachment with someone 
somewhere along the line it was unsafe. So for me, I'm thinking, okay, where along the line did that feel unsafe to bring too much interest to someone? Because I have that, you know, if I show too much interest in someone, they're going to think, you know, that I'm needy or that I'm, they're not going to want it. Somewhere along the line, I got the message, if I show too much interest, if I show genuine interest, someone's not going to like it. That's what came up for me. And that happened in my last relationship a lot because I was in a long relationship and the last few years of it, when I had grown more personally, I started showing interest, especially sexual interest. You know, okay, all my sexual interest was thwarted and pushed away. And I didn't ever realize that there was something amiss with that. I put up with it. I thought I allowed it. I allowed it for so many years. I allowed it for so many years. I allowed my interest, my enthusiasm, my passion, my full emotional and sexual expression to be pushed away. But I, this isn't about my last relationship. This is about me realizing that I've had this pattern and I still have a little bit of that with me. And so all I can think about is somewhere along the line, way back when I learned or observed among my parents that showing genuine interest and enthusiasm was unwanted. And it's, it's a lack of authenticity, but it's not because I have it and I'm not showing it. It's just I didn't even have it in me. Like, I didn't even know. I didn't even realize that I was withholding enthusiasm because it just wasn't there. It had been shut off for so long. And then I had my, I put myself in a lot of positions with people after my last relationship where my enthusiasm wasn't returned. So I kind of learned to shut it off. But really, here's the key. If I'm, if I show my enthusiasm to be with you and I'm excited to see you, I have to show it and not be worried about your response. And if your response is negative, that's a sign to me that this is not a good connection because that enthusiasm, you know, is reciprocated by some people. Like, um, there's a lady at the gym I'm friends with and I hadn't seen her in a while. So when I was there the other day, I saw her, she was working out doing some floor work and I saw her and she saw me I'm like, Hey, you know, it's so good to see you. And she just immediately got up and we gave each other a hug. So that was mutual enthusiasm. But that felt really good, but there could be other situations where people are frightened by that or threatened by that like in my last relationship. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is that I'm discovering, as I'm working with my therapist, I'm discovering parts of my authentic nature that I had disconnected from, which is different from people pleasing, by the way. People pleasing is, well, it, it's kind of related though, because that's why I'm making on the same video, but people pleasing people are really gross because they're manipulative. They're like, if I do enough things for you, then you will like me. So it's very manipulative and that's why I find it a huge turnoff. But what I'm doing is not that much better because the people pleasers are unaware that they're people pleasing. They're unaware. And I was unaware that I wasn't showing my exuberance. I was unaware. I didn't know what helped me. Um, I've been working with this therapist now for two months and what's helped me there is talking about, um, my feelings that they're valid and my needs that they're valid. And as it's kind of like settling in, it's like, Oh, I'm starting to be more aware of 
of myself, I guess. Anyway, the what a lot of people do through this kind of um, lack of awareness is falling into roles where we don't bring all of ourselves to the table and we don't even know it. You know, I watch a lot of videos about narcissists or people who are controlling or people who are walled off. I don't think that they're doing it. They know what they're doing, but they're not aware. That's the problem. They're not aware. And I think a lot of us only become aware either by being in a lot of pain and seeing like something isn't working here. What is going on? You start looking at yourself if you're in enough pain or by going to therapy where a therapist who will challenge us or accept us and start becoming aware of parts of ourselves that we've just disconnected from, you know, as a coping mechanism in childhood, which is very smart, but really limits our life as adults. So that's why being a people pleaser is a coping mechanism. And for me, not showing my exuberance is also a coping mechanism because it keeps me safe. I don't have to face rejection. So as I'm making this video, you know, I still, I still haven't um, thought about it enough because I just realized this yesterday. What I don't have any memories of, oh, I showed my enthusiasm. Oh, probably here. Here we go. I probably, you know, I probably was like, hey, mom, do you want to play a game with me? And she was like, my mom had three kids in four years and my dad was a piece of shit. So she was always very busy um, doing all the housework or whatever. You know, she was just very busy and we went outside a lot to play. I can imagine that a lot of times I might said, hey, mom, you know, I want to be inside with you or I want to play. And she'd be like, just go outside, go outside. Because she was like so unloved by my dad. I think she was emotionally, as much as she loved us, just emotionally often hurt because of my dad just taking off for weeks at a time or being so mean to her. And then all the housework with the three kids, you know, this was before people had could call out for make dinners, you know, and I think she was just distracted and didn't realize. And maybe I learned, well, I'm not going to show her my enthusiasm. It could have been something like that. And so I kind of tried it in my last relationship, but when it was also pushed away, I just tried to figure out how to be okay with it. I tried to figure it out, but I never at any point said, this isn't okay. Like it never even occurred to me to say this isn't okay because the other parts of the relationship were good, just like in my childhood. But let's see what I'm trying to get at here is I woke up to the fact that I was withholding, showing, initiating exuberance towards a person because it felt scary. It didn't feel safe. But I'm an adult now. I don't have to go on autopilot from my childhood. It's still a little scary because I think I'm going to be judged as needy or someone might push me away. And plus it's a new muscle I have, I'm not used to using. So I'm just sharing this video because I'm hoping that other people will get something out of it, specifically men who are like people pleasers or men who are afraid of rejection, afraid of asking women out. I'm afraid of rejection, but I, 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 I wasn't aware of where it came from. And it was this showing my interest. And so a lot, I hear a lot of men say, oh, when I show my interest in a woman, I'm toxic. Okay, I don't think that comes from the Me Too movement because I know men who don't feel that way. I think that it comes from childhood where possibly you showed your enthusiasm about spending time with someone that you had an attachment to, like a parent, a grandparent, a sibling, and they pushed you away. And so you learned that your exuberance, your joy, your interest was unwanted. 
and as a coping mechanism against that person to keep pushing you away, you decide you're just not going to show it to them, which is very smart of you. It was very smart of me. It was very smart of me because we want to protect ourselves. But these protective mechanisms that I built in childhood or that some of you built in childhood, how well is that working now? I have been single for 10 years. And it's not because I don't want a relationship. I've just kind of given up. And I have a lot of stories around why it's this way. But maybe part of it is that I wasn't like the gal in the corner. You, 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 you. Maybe, maybe some men would be very responsive if I just started showing more exuberance Instead of pushing it down, I shouldn't say hi, I shouldn't initiate, you know, people won't want it. And I think that's very important for men, especially because men, as you have a Y chromosome, we are two X's, you're XY, despite what the woke people tell you, men aren't women and women aren't men. And that Y chromosome in addition to the testosterone, starting in the womb, you are different. Your brains are bigger than female brains, but we have more connections between both hemispheres. You have a greater lung capacity, your internal organs, everything is different. Your sex drive is different. Your ability to focus on a task. If you ask, um, it, um, I was wa listening to Suzanne Venker podcast recently and the gentleman wrote, um, she was interviewing a gentleman, part of the organization of the author who wrote um, The Dead Bedroom Fix, which I ordered. And he figured out how to get his wife interested in sex again. But he and his wife were brushing their teeth. And the wife was like, what do you think about when you brush your teeth? And he's like, left, right, left, right, brushing, brushing, brushing. And she's like, oh, my God, I'm thinking about what the kids need to do, what their homework is, what the activities are, what to make for dinner. And it's true. Like our brain, my brain is constantly going like that, even though I'm calm. But men tend to be like very singularly focused. And men love competition. They love to compete in sports. More men than women love to compete. And that competition, that single focusness, that discipline, that's what women find so fucking attractive. And you take, you, you get a man who's got, you get a family type of man, a family type of man who takes that same energy and directs it on a woman. Oh my God, it's just magic. And I haven't had anyone do that to me. I haven't had a family type of man that I find attractive, a family type of man direct his testosterone focused energy at me in enthusiasm that's what I've been waiting for I haven't had that happen to me it's been 10 years it has not happened to me uh, it could be the stars it could be this or that but maybe I energetically wasn't in that same space I don't know I'm I like to kind of look at myself and give myself new opportunities. And new opportunities aren't always about doing more or going more places. Sometimes it's about who I'm being. So, so men, that is very attractive. And any men who feel like showing my interest in a woman is toxic, I'm going to challenge you that you have the same wound that I have. That somewhere along the line, we were taught that showing our interest and showing our enthusiasm was not wanted by the people who raised us, so we had to turn that off. But that's the quality that a man needs to bring to a woman in order for us to find you attractive, that you, as the stronger person, as the protector, are funneling your love and your masculine power in our direction. That's, that's, that's the key, guys, to get women. That you're a kind family man who's got testosterone, discipline, focus, energy. You don't have to be rich, but you need kindness. You need you to be in strength with your masculine testosterone and own it and direct that interest at a woman 
And there are so many men who do that. I was out with mom, one of my friends the other day at dinner, we were sitting at the bar and we were looking around at all the guys. And there was one guy who were like, that's the guy. That's the guy we would date. And you know what? He was a little bit heavy set. He was with a woman. He was a little bit heavy set. But from his face, he just radiated. Good guy. And I would put it as, I can tell this guy can get women. This guy obviously likes women. I could just tell from his face. He's a relational man. He likes women. He's kind. He's trustworthy. We read that on your faces. Your whole personality emanates on your face and that's what women see and you guys can't read that off faces because you have less connections you have bigger brains but you have fewer connections you can't read emotions like we can I can tell in an instant if this is a family type of man that I can trust off of his face in a second women can do that so that's why who you are on the inside is going to attract women do you like women? Are you a family man? Are you kind? Are you a provider? So it's the inner work that some of you need to do, especially if you were raised that you are, if you felt unloved by your mother, it's super, super important because if you felt unloved by your mother, you are automatically going to have walls up against women that they are not safe, that they're just out to hurt you. And there are a lot of men they're on the internet talking about how all women are gold diggers, all women are narcissists, because they have these glasses from their childhood that their mothers put on them, and they're not able to see all the beautiful women out there, because I get a lot of comments from men, too, about how much their wives have added to their lives, how happy they are that they're married. It's been 20, 30, 40 years, 10 years. My woman made my life better. So anyway, uh, I kind of put a lot out on this video, but to summarize it, it's mainly about the coping mechanism of shutting down parts of ourselves to be accepted and liked. Okay, that's one thing. But then also the exuberance in the exuberance that we don't allow ourselves to show because in the past that was unwanted. So that's kind of like, maybe two different topics, but it's kind of related, you know, because there are parts of us walled off. I will say the people pleasers are even on the worst part, but the lack of exuberance is also not helpful. It's just a matter of degree, you know, of what we shut off. So like, I'm not a people pleaser, so people don't, I, I've never been with someone who was abusive or a narcissist or a cheater but I've been in unhappy relationships and I've been single for a long time. So I think it's just a matter of degree, you know, but all these things of what parts of myself, because children, look at a baby. They are not afraid to show you any of their needs. They will cry. They will fuss. They will laugh. They have all of that, but then they learn what to prune back. But the good thing is that, we have just turned off those parts and we can enliven them again. Anyway, um, this video was much longer than I wanted. So, um, I watch, I will watch certain YouTube videos that are even longer than this only if I like the voices of the people. And sometimes when I wake up in the middle of the night, I'll put on a YouTube video, but it has to be someone whose voice is soothing and it can't be like loud, soft, loud, soft, where they have different clips in. If their voice is soothing, I'll put it on and I'll actually fall asleep while they're talking. Like um, Gabor Mate is one, Eckhart Tolle is one, uh, so certain women that have soft voices. But if there's someone who's like, if it's like news or something super exciting, I can't listen to it very long, even when I'm awake. But if someone, there's someone whose voice is calm and soothing, I will listen to a really long YouTube video. They can hold my attention. Um, 
especially if they're interesting. So I'm wondering if people listen to my whole video, if they like my voice. I don't know, but I make these videos for myself as much as anyone else. And um, thank you for watching. Uh, please leave any comments you have about parts of yourself that you think you may have turned off as a coping mechanism. Um, and thank you so much for watching my video.